Alabama's military bases need more protection from foreign governments, according to one lawmaker. A study confirms that the automobile industry is a major economic engine for the state's economy, and a weekend program promises to trace Olympic history from ancient Rome to modern-day France. A wet weekend coming up across East Alabama. We will have the complete forecast details coming up. Coming up in sports, there's a softball camp coming to East Alabama. Also, Jacksonville State's good new turf and a big announcement involving Chakawaka Park. We have more on all these stories in just a minute as EAN Local News starts now. This segment of EAN Local News is brought to you by Oxford Lumber. Come visit any of our locations in Oxford, Jacksonville, Talladega, and Roanoke. Hello, we're glad you could join us. I'm Katie Edwards. And I'm Mike Stedham. For the first time in four decades, local Meals on Wheels programs will be getting a new source for their meals. The closure of the dietary unit at Stringfellow Memorial Hospital means that the food will now be prepared at Regional Medical Center. The meals are distributed through the area by volunteers from Interfaith Ministries and Jacksonville Meals on Wheels. The diet-specific meals have provided consistent nutrition in the form of a hot lunch for individuals who are homebound and cannot go out to shop for groceries or can no longer prepare their own meals at home. According to program officials, Interfaith Ministries serves between 70 and 90 clients each weekday, while Jacksonville Meals on Wheels delivers approximately 40 to 50 meals each day. Trip Johnson of RMC says the hospital is making it a priority to continue providing these meals. Catherine Noah and her crew at the dietary unit at RMC are adjusting logistics and staffing to accommodate the near 150 extra meals for the two programs. And RMC's security team is organizing space for volunteers to swing through the complex to pick up the meals for delivery. U.S. Senator Katie Britt of Alabama has renewed her call for the passage of the Protect Our Bases Act, which she introduced earlier this session. The act strengthens the protection of America's military, intelligence, and national laboratory sites, including the Anniston Army Depot. Britt's statement follows the Treasury Department's release of a proposed rule intended to bolster the Committee on Foreign Investment in the United States safeguards. While she says the rule change is encouraging, Britt says it's past time for Congress to pass her entire bill. If passed, the new rule would require that a committee review real estate transactions near military installations to prevent foreign adversaries from buying land close to sensitive areas. In addition to Anniston Army Depot, the rule would impact the land around Fort Novacell, Maxwell Air Force Base, and Redstone Arsenal. The rule change was proposed after a Chinese company with ties to the Communist Party announced plans to purchase land near Grand Forks Air Force Base in North Dakota. That deal fell through, but lawmakers said they want to pass a new rule before a similar case arises. Cars drive a big part of Alabama's economy. That's a summary of findings by two organizations that track the impact of automobile production on each state's economy. This year's report shows that Alabama's car manufacturers, led by Lincoln's Honda plant, contributed $10.8 billion to the state's economy. The plants made over 1.12 million new vehicles and employed almost 89,000 workers paying them $6.4 billion in wages and other forms of compensation. The companies have invested $14.5 billion in Alabama, and last year they paid the state and local governments $892,000 in taxes and other fees. When we come back, what does ancient Rome have to do with next week's Olympics? For over 60 years, Oxford Lumber has been servicing our area and our customer service has always been our main focus. Our customer service is what sets us apart from anyone else. From the moment you enter, our highly trained staff will treat you like family. To enthusiastically provide total customer satisfaction within a positive and self-fulfilling employee relations environment. Visit us at any of our four locations or at OxfordLumber.com. 
This segment of EAN Local News is brought to you by WM Grocery, located in Heflin, Wadawi, Roanoke, and in Piedmont. The Anniston Museum of Natural History will host a program Saturday afternoon connecting the dots between the Olympics, ancient Rome, and the French Revolution. The program, to be held from 2 until 3, uses artifacts from the Berman Museum collection to illustrate those connections. Participants will have the opportunity to uncover stories behind artifacts linked to the 2024 Summer Olymp Olympics host city, exploring their ties to both ancient Rome and the tumultuous era of the French Revolution. This special program is included with museum admission and is free for museum members. The Calhoun County Landfill is offering a free dump day on Saturday from 7 a.m. until noon exclusively for Calhoun County residents. The landfill will accept appliances, yard waste, shingles, scrap metal, carpets, remodeling waste, and other unwanted items free of charge. Certain restrictions apply and there will be a charge for household garbage and tires. When we return, a big back to school party is being planned for next week. Spring into freshness at WM. Celebrate the season with our bountiful selection of farm fresh produce. From juicy berries to crisp greens, taste the flavors of spring at WM. Visit us today and let the freshness bloom in every bite. This segment of EAN Local News is brought to you by Waldrop Manufacturing, metal buildings made right here in Calhoun County. Anniston Zen Park will be the site for a back to school fair on Wednesday from 11 a.m. until 3 p.m. The event is being organized by the Agency for Substance Abuse Prevention and TCR Child Care. There will be food, school supplies, bounce houses, and other events. In case of rain, the fair will be held inside the bridge at First United Methodist Church, close to Zen Park. Carver Community Center will host a couple of gymnastics camps Saturday for young athletes. The camps are run by KG Athletics and will run from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. and from noon until 2 p.m. The program promises to be filled with flips, fun, and fantastic memories. If you like pursuing trivia, local quizmaster Shane Knowles will be hosting a Clash of the Champions contest on Saturday afternoon, celebrating Useless Trivia's 13th year. The competition starts at 2 p.m. at the Apothecary Draft House on Jacksonville's Public Square. There's a $30 entry fee for teams of up to seven people each. Well, a fun fact about you, Mike, is that you are actually very good at trivia. I do like trivia, and I plan on being at the Clash of Champions, probably in last place. <laughs> but we plan on being there on Saturday anyway. And the great thing about trivia and playing trivia with your team is that it's something you can do rain or shine. It's an indoor activity. You're exactly right. Yes, it is. Well, John Holder joins us now in the EAN Weather Center to tell us what we can expect for the weekend. John? Mike and Katie, one word for the weekend, and that is wet. On and off, showers and thunderstorms, a good bet throughout the entire weekend. We'll have the complete forecast for all of East Alabama next. For metal buildings in Alabama and the southeast, Waldrop Manufacturing is your one-stop source. A Waldrop metal building provides the coverage and protection your investments need. They specialize in carports, RV covers, portable buildings, and storage buildings. Stop paying rent for storage. With Waldrop's price per foot, you can actually save money by buying straight from the manufacturer. Waldrop buildings are guaranteed because Waldrop manufactures buildings with U.S. Steel right here in Calhoun County. Waldrop Manufacturing, serving the entire Southeast. Give them a call today. Lots of clouds across East Alabama today. A little bit of rainfall at times. That held temperatures way below the average. Our average high temperature at this time of year is 90 degrees, only 82 today. This is a trend that's going to continue. Our low this morning exactly where it should be at 71 degrees. Record high temperature 102. The record low only 60. The sun rising on your Saturday morning at 548 and the sun setting on your Friday night at 752. Weather on your street for your Friday night. Timber Circle out of the Alexandria Valley. High rain chances tonight. 
about 70 degrees for the low tonight and about a 70% chance of rain tonight across Alexandria and East Alabama. Coming up tomorrow, we're going to keep those high rain chances in the forecast, mainly in the afternoon. We'll have sunshine in the morning, mainly dry in the morning hours. Then after lunchtime, those storms start to fire off. Thrash Lane in the Golden Springs area of Anniston. Get ready to see sunshine in the morning, Clouds and rain in the afternoon, temperatures still way below the average, only 84 for the high on your Saturday. And weather on your street for next week across East Alabama. Highway 431 down at Hollis Crossroads in Cleburne County. If you're heading in that direction, expect showers every day, and that's true for all of Calhoun and Cleburne and Etowah counties, Talladega County as well. Temperatures remaining in the 80s next week, which is way below the average. Here's the seven day forecast for all of East Alabama. And again, we are highlighting those high rain chances, 70% rain chances across the board from tomorrow all the way into the middle to latter part of next week. Look at these daytime highs, the high normal high temperature about 90 degrees. We're going to stay in the 80s for the next several days. As a matter of fact, as you look at this seven day forecast, it may be another week before we even see 90 degrees before we even see an average temperature here across East Alabama. So again, wet weather and temperatures remaining well in check of about five to six degrees below the average coming up in the next week here in East Alabama. And we're going to be taking a look at what's causing all of this. Well, we've got this front that's kind of been parked here in the southeast, and it is not really going anywhere. Normally, a front will come through, and this will push on out, out of the way, and clear things out. This is kind of stalled out and meandering back and forth across the state of Alabama, and that is leaving us with some unsettled weather. That means every day, a lot of moisture in place, and it doesn't take much to get those showers and thunderstorms firing. We don't think this map is going to change a whole lot coming up in the next week. I'll be back here tomorrow morning with your Saturday day at a glance across East Alabama. And of course, I'll be back with your Sunday morning breakfast forecast, your Monday morning breakfast forecast, and I'll be back here Monday evening for EA and local news with a complete in-depth look at the forecast for the work week ahead for all of East Alabama. Some big news coming out of Chockawaka Park in Oxford having to do with sports. And of course, Namath Pitts has the story for you right now. Namath. Thanks, John. Earlier this week, one SEC college softball coach leaked some exciting news on social media that involves Chuckalaka Park. Earlier this week, Alabama head softball coach Patrick Murphy posted fall ball softball dates on the X app. One of those dates that he listed was October 27th, which is a Sunday, but next to that date was Oxford, Alabama. Nothing has been confirmed yet in terms of an opponent although Jacksonville State seems to be the targeted opponent. Regardless of the opponent, Chocolaca Park will be hosting an SEC school this fall who is fresh off competing in the Women's College World Series. We talked with Oxford event coordinator Joshua Kraft, who did confirm that Alabama softball will be playing at Chocolaca Park this fall. Yeah, uh, us at Chocolaca Park in the city of Oxford, we are really uh, excited about uh, having elite college softball teams coming to the park and you know we have championship uh, events in the uh, spring and summer and it's just a, a another uh, another notch on our belt that we are able to host SEC and College World Series caliber uh, softball teams and we're hoping to do more uh, as we continue to grow at Chocolaca Park. Three former Calhoun County softball players and one former Randolph County softball player are hosting summer softball sessions at Oxford in August. Former Oxford softball players Ashlyn Burns, Berkeley Mooney, Taylee Sims, and Randolph County softball star Brantley Wortham are hosting a softball summer camp session on August 6th. Ashlyn Burns is headed to Wallace State Community College. Berkeley Mooney is headed to Montevallo. Taylee Sims is headed to Alabama State, and Brantley Wortham is headed to UAB. Session one will be from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. This session will be completely hitting. The second session will be from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. This session will involve fielding, pitching, and catching. The camp is for ages 8 to 15 and is $45 per session. The camp will be at the Oxford Lake Softball Complex. For more information, contact Ashlyn Burns at 
2471 or contact Brantley Wortham at 256-624-0149. Jacksonville State is not only getting a new stadium name, but announced this week that they will be getting new turf. The turf replacement is just one of many stadium enhancements aimed at providing a top tier experience, reducing injuries and improving the safety and well-being of student athletes at Jacksonville State. The new field will feature the vintage Gamecock logo at midfield as its main highlight. The end zones will now be red, showcasing the Jack State football branding in white letters. Additionally, the field will display the Conference USA logos and the prominent Amherst corporate marks along the sidelines. The new playing service at Amherst Stadium will utilize AstroTurf's Root Zone 3D series, known for its superior performance and safety. The project is slated for completion in early August, with fans getting their first glimpse when the Gamecocks kick off the 2024 season against Coastal Carolina on national television on August 29th. That's it for EAN Local Sports. Let's go back over to Mike and Katie. Thanks for that update, Namath, and thank you for watching today. You can find us every weeknight on Facebook and YouTube and on a variety of sites, including our website, The Calhoun Journal, and Newsbreak. Just go to the platform of your choice and watch our news, sports, and weather coverage whenever it's convenient for you. Have a wonderful weekend. We'll see you back here Monday for your news on your schedule.